<laughs> Hi guys! Waiting for the green light. Yay! <laughs> Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Tremnit and I thought it would be fun to come on today and do a little bit of yarn dyeing live. I have a very loosely structured plan and uh, you know there might be some times that I spend a lot of time talking to myself as I'm trying to mix colors and whatnot but I just thought it would be fun to play around with some color mixing with the acid dyes and use my my pumpkin tree up here um, my, my mini pumpkins that I grew as inspiration for a colorway that I want to dye um, Thank you. I have like a mixture of like mini pumpkin mix and I grow them sort of up this rose trellis and then like the little pumpkins hang down and it's really cute. Uh, but the with the weather being really hot and rainy, uh, some of the vines just are still growing and I might get more, but some of them are a little less happy. So I decided that it was time to harvest them and the colors are just beautiful. Like I love the grass green of the leaves, the the yellow and orange and ivory. Um, I got a really good balance of all the different like pumpkin varieties this year. Um, good morning everyone. And so yeah we're gonna play around, do some layering of colors and I have no idea how close I'll get to my inspiration. I think that if I were to go with food coloring, I might have an easier time trying to get the colors I want, especially like with color right, I could uh, look at some of the suggested recipes or use, you know, it's easier to count drops than it is to necessarily measure the stock solutions that I have of the acid dyes. But I'm gonna give it a shot. <laughs> I'm going to give it a shot. And I think my plan, I want to dye. So today I'm going to be dyeing some Knit Picks Hawthorne fingering weight yarn. And this yarn is 80% superwash fine Highland wool, 20% polyamide, which is basically like nylon. And yeah, I, the yarn is dry. I didn't pre soak it. I think that. Ooh. I think that I will likely be twisting it um, and dyeing it while twisted as a way to, it's a nice way to apply some resist to the yarn. Um, and actually, okay, maybe I do want some of the white. I was kind of trying to decide if I wanted to dye like a pale yellow to have some hints of that behind. Uh, but I think that the natural white is actually pretty close to the pumpkin. So uh, I'm like going through my, got my, my diary, haha, <laughs> my little notes. It's going to be Oh, thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed the Indigo video. Yeah, so it's Indigo week. And on, if you just go to the channel page, you'll see a playlist. I shared my fail and then my first success with my Indigo Bat. And there's three other videos that will be coming out with this this week. Um, oh, and you watched the Rhubarb Leaf one? I'm glad you enjoyed that too. Okay, so the, the pumpkins are the inspiration, not the dye source. Um, but yeah, I think that, there we go. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm like, can I? There. Yeah, let's see what we can do. Do I dye yarn every day? No, not quite every day. Probably every week. Um, it depends on my filming schedule and where I am with like Dye Pot Weekly episodes or if I have a special week coming up, um, that kind of thing. And today I really just felt like trying, this was so pretty, I wanted to try to do something with the colors and I didn't know. <laughs> I, yeah, and I, I was like, oh, this would be a harder to edit um, a long one, but yeah. And uh, I live in Massachusetts, that's the other thing. So, all right, but so I think that the colors 
that I'm going to go with, and hopefully there'll be, and if there's just hints of the white left behind, that's fine. But I'm going to be going for a yellow, an orange, and a green. I think are, is the way that I want to do this. And I'm planning to layer it, um, starting with the yellow, then doing an orange, and then doing the green is the order I think that I would I want to do. And I would also be really happy if some of the green and orange layered to give us a little bit of a brown. Um, because there's the hints, I'm not mixing a brown specifically, but there's the hints of browns in the stem. Uh, so on some spots on the pumpkins, and then on some spots on the leaves too. So it would be sort of true to my pumpkin tree. <laughs> um, oh, no, well, no worries. It would be true to my pumpkin tree um, if those mix in not quite the way that we want. Um, but I also have some other berry yarn available. Um, so if I need to like exhaust the dye pot, I can, I can do that. But but first we need to start mixing. And oh, I think, so Nipix Hawthorne I think is currently back ordered until the end of September, but uh, Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn should dye pretty similarly. And the same thing with Felici. Those are both um, superwash wool nylon blends. And yeah, we'll see, we'll see how this all goes. <laughs> no, uh oh, I have to leave the phone on in case, um, there's something with the kids, but I'm glad that the white of the bare yarn is pretty good for the pumpkin white because that means that I'm not worrying about trying to get an ivory type pastel, which uh, would be a little harder. <laughs> so the four colors that I have today, and actually wait, I'll come up here and then show it. So I might not um, be able to see all the comments while I'm doing stuff at the stove, but um, whenever I pop back, feel free to re-ask comments, or if you guys are in the chat, if you guys could help me out, that would be awesome. All right, here is our inspiration. Do, 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 do. I don't think I'm going to be using my steam pan exactly, but I think that I might be using it and doing some of the mixing of stuff in here. Uh, so that is why I'm putting it down just to kind of give me a little bit of a work surface. So the four colors I brought down are, this is Jacquard Sun Yellow, and it's pretty underexposed now. I think I need to cover you this. Figure video. Uh, so the sun yellow, it does, it's not in solution well. It's sort of irritating and some of it will rinse out. I mix all of these stock solutions back when I did my first stock solution video. Sure, I've got some pink, which I think that I might want to use for making the orange. I've got my, oh, you guys can see. I've got my dye pot here with 16 cups of water. And actually, I'm going to turn that on to start heating up. There's no acid in there yet. Um, so I've got some mixing to do. Okay, so the, I've got the pink. Uh, the blue that I have is this sky blue. And then the red is fire red. And I mixed all of these back in January. Um, and I've been pretty happy with all of them. I love the fire red. It gives sort of a really deep, it has a cool tone red, I think, at least in my opinion. The sun yellow, there's probably like, you could maybe with urea or something could make it a little more soluble. It does still dye yarn really, really nicely. But let's think. I'm going for three colors, mainly, and yeah, we're just going to sort of go for this and see what we get. Here is a little pan. No, nope, I'll just keep this down here. <laughs> Sometimes I just like to make things up 
as I go along. I'm happy that I have these stock solutions. I sort of wish that I had them in like an eyedropper or something. Oh, I think I got some fringes somewhere I can grab. But uh, let's just start. I'm going to start by just adding. Bringing some of the pure colors out to start with. Because there are three primary colors. Color mixing is not one of my strengths. Uh, Maybe I do I need to do the red. It might take the it might take the color too far. But let's just pour some so I have some red. And maybe it's gonna be a little bit of pink. One of the reasons for the pink is that the red, and to get a true red, the color is way more potent than the yellow. So when you're mixing an orange, you do not, you need a lot more yellow than red, at least with these colors that I picked out. They are not evenly as potent. All right. Make it up as I go along. Got some syringes and needle nose bottles. Um, but it should help me like do some drops. start with, I'm going to go for the orange first. You know that's not the first color I'm going to dye, but okay, we're starting with a third cup of yellow. Probably should be writing this down. Let's do, let's do four drops of the pink. Four drops of red. Let's see, we're already the the ratio there. So let's see. Okay, one third cup yellow. Four drops. Pink. Four red. And this is um. What was I going to say? This 
all of these started off as 1% stock solutions, but I think the mix wasn't great. So, uh, yeah. Um, oh, no. The, the pumpkins. What did I call the video? Maybe I should edit that. Pumpkin tree inspiration. Yes, the, the pumpkins are inspiring the colorway. Actually, okay, so this seems to be a little less orange, but this might be the yellowish color that I want. Uh, interesting. Let me... Mm, maybe not. Maybe I need to push it a little more for the orange, but I think that that's the right direction for the yellow, because I think just the sun yellow would be too bright. But let's do another four drops of red four drops of pink. So now that's eight of each. Take some paper towel. That's pretty good, actually. That is really good. That's a very good, very good pumpkin. And the reason why I'm being careful in counting is because I'm likely going to want to mix more of each of these colors. And so, in fact, I'm going to mix a little more of this orange right now by adding another third of a cup of my yellow and eight drops of red. And eight drops of pink. Okay, I'm glad that I got these little syringes out. And if you're a fellow parent, you, these ones I think I had from like, these were not like kid syringes, but there we go. It's a nice pumpkin-y orange. Uh, but if you're a parent, then you end up with like a gazillion little syringes from the kids, like medical whatnot. Okay. And what's interesting is this orange might break. Or, honestly, it could be that the yellow is dissolving slower because it's a bit of a pain in my tuchus. Let's get some more, some more of the yellow. Okay. And now, I want to mix, do I have another coffee cup? No. Okay, I have another cup. All right, let's, for this one, let's start with, again, a third cup of yellow. Let's try two drops of the pink. Oh. Rinse off my... Everything I'm using today is dedicated dye equipment. Uh, nothing here is food safe, so. That might not be, what did I do? I just had a paper towel. Oh, here it is. Okay, that's still a bit too bright. Um, I want it a little more orangey. I mean, not orangey, but I want it to be a yellow just on the orange side. Okay, I might, so what, I think I've done three drops of pink. Uh, do one drop of red. That might be a bit better. Yeah, I'm not sure 
it's subtle, but I think that this, even though it looks pretty orange concentrated, is less, it's a little less electric feeling. Okay, maybe let's try one more drop red. Hope I'm not taking it too far. You can always add more yellow. This is the second drop of red. Okay, there's like an orange tint to it, but I like that. Okay, so that was a third of a cup, and I want it to be a paler color, so I might not mix more of it first. But one third cup, and I doubled. I think that now I don't want saturation wise I might not use this whole cup at first I might just use part because the yellow even though I've got sort of that tone I want it's still more pastel than the orange the orange is brighter so um, I think I'm just going to use a fraction of this yellow that I've mixed Hey guys, I'm pretty happy. Oh, I need another cup. We gotta do our green now. Um, so if you're just joining in, the colors that I'm going for today are inspired by some pumpkins that I grew myself. And I'm going for sort of a grass green, because, well, pumpkin leaf green is sort of a nice deep green. Um, there's the white, which is the bare yarn for my white pumpkins. There's an orange, sort of a pastel yellow, and then maybe some hints of brown from the way that the colors overlap each other. Okay, now this time, I should rinse this off. Um, I'm trying to remember. I think that the blue is the more, or that the yellow is the more potent one this time. So let's start small and then we will scale up as needed. So let's do a one to one ratio. We'll do one tablespoon yellow and one tablespoon of blue. And we will see where this brings us. But again, not all the yellow is in solution. So, huh, that's actually not bad, the one to one. I thought that when I did this before, but maybe my blue has gotten more concentrated towards the bottom of the vial. But here's my pumpkin leaf. And okay, it's looking a little dark on camera. Um, the one to one ratio is really nice. And that's done a really nice job for the green that I wanted. Uh, let me see. Um, oh, thank you for joining the Patreon. Thank you, Janelle. Um, so the okay, so I'll, I'll talk a little about that. Since the best knit picks yarn for socks. Um, I think Stroll, Felici, and Hawthorne are the three, like, sock yarns that they pretty much do. Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and mix more of the green just so I have it. Like a one-to-one. -one. And then see how that's doing. Then this, my friends, is our color palette. I was nervous. This is way easier than I thought that I was going to have. Um, and then we're still waiting for the pot to heat up. 
So I will come and answer some questions and pop the inspiration back up in just a second. Kind of. Sometimes when I wash my hands and take off gloves, I'm able to put the gloves back on and reuse them. And sometimes I can't. Okay, I want to set these aside, but I don't want to stay in the counter. Thankfully, I always wash the counter off in between dyeing sessions, but if some does get on the counter, I found that Lysol or something removes, th removes things really well. Um, yeah, so now I'm just going to have to decide when, oh, you can see some of the color separation. Um, maybe not, but there is some color separation going on. But do do do. Mixing on the uh, stove top actually worked pretty well. But so the three colors that were, or I guess the four colors that we're really working with. Uh, sorry, the lights are like are this green, orange, yellow, and white. Um, but I am going to um, have it to you yet. I'll show these guys the pumpkin to heat up. As I wait for the pot to heat up. So I just want to rinse this out. Now saves time later. Uh, and all the yarn that I have right now is dry um, still. So let me pop up. Oh, my poor pumpkin leaf is starting to wilt. Uh, here. I'm trying to figure out where to put this so I can put my face. There we go. Hi guys. Um, so that is my inspiration for the day. These are mini pumpkins that I grew myself. And uh, the, the white of the white pumpkins, and of course it's blown out a little bit, um, matches pretty nicely with uh, the white of It goes pretty well with the white of the pumpkins. So I am pretty happy with that. Um, what name dye is being used? Okay, so now I'm gonna go through and answer all kinds of questions. And if I miss your question, feel free to ask again. Um, what is the name of dye being used? I'm using Jacquard acid dyes. Um, I think that I have that in the video description as well, yes. Um, is there any reason in particular I'm going with dry yarn instead of pre-soap? I want an even absorption of color. And one of the best ways to do that is with dry um, yarn. Or not one of the best, but like a nice way to get uneven, an even a little more kettle dyed feel because it will, is just starting with it dry. And of course it won't be dry for the next few, but um, it'll be dry at first. Uh, I'm glad that you could join. Is this super washed? This is reminding me of the 64 box of crayons. Woohoo! So I was nervous because previously when I've mixed Jacquard acid dyes, I've just had, excuse me, I've just had, uh, I've done like, you know, with, with cups. But being able to have the drops, that's one thing that makes me like food coloring more is the ability to like say, okay, just add one more drop of this or just one more drop of that. Um, especially when I know some colors sort of overshadow other ones. Uh, the acid will go in the pot. I haven't figured that out yet. I'm sort of making this up as I go along. And we'll see if we get something that feels like it fits with the inspiration or not. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, Swish is not... Oh, if I said swish, then then maybe I made a mistake. Um, Stroll, Felici, and Hawthorne are the stock yarns I recommend. Swish is 100% superwash merino. 
And I think that you could make a sock with it, but it would be, you might want to hold it with like some nylon thread or something to give it a little more strength because I'd be concerned about the durability from like just wearing it on your heels and toes and it wearing out. Um, yeah. Uh, but also I will say that I am not a sock knitter. <laughs> so I don't think I've ever knit socks out of fingering length. Oh no, I might have once. Maybe that was scroll ball. Or sorry, not scroll. It was, uh, I forget what the brim was. It wasn't with hips. But maybe it was four. Oh, good. We're starting to boil. So I'm going to be transferring the pot. It's like on that side. I'm moving my hand like over there. Uh, and I'll move it so that way you guys will be able to see into it. Okay, what's the ratio of water to dye powder for my base colors? I mixed 1% stock solutions, which is uh, one gram of dye per every 100 milliliters of volume. So for to do a one liter stock solution, I measured out 10 grams of the dye and then brought the, the volume up to a liter. I think that in this case, you could pretty much just measure a liter of water because the volume of the dye is so small that it's not gonna shift uh, the scale as much. But technically, when you're making a solution like that, you want to measure your volume after you've mixed in whatever, ever, other, whatever solids you're adding to get like the correct um, solution. But I was also not using like a graduated cylinder or anything. So I was sort of guesstimating. Um, so they're approximately 1% stock solutions. Uh, with, so I, I mentioned that I had some solubility issues, but in general, it's easier to make like a, larger volume stock solution than a smaller one. Um, but in the future, I might just go straight from the powder into whatever I'm doing. Um, so that's the ratio. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, well, so I make shawls and stuff out of soft yarn. I love fingering weight yarn. Um, it is one of my favorites to dye and one of my favorites to, to work with. Um, I just like, I, the, my problem is I go barefoot everywhere. And so, and like, if I'm going to make socks and not wear them, is that worth it? But I do want to try to make, keep a pair of socks for Christmas. And, um, which I know that he's not watching because he does have a pair of socks. There's no way he's watching, but I want to try to make him a pair of socks. And so, yeah, but we will see how close we get to our inspiration, but I wanted to pop that back up. And I'm gonna make myself go away and we are going to get started. Um, but I guess first, I'm gonna to wanna to retwist this. Make sure so I can see that I'm on camera. Um, okay, so we've got, you know, the hank of sock yarn. And I'm gonna be dyeing them as a twisted, I've got in between my two hands, I'm twisting it together. And then I sort of fold it in half put one end inside the other, and then I can adjust. And that's actually a higher twist than I want. Maybe I want it to be a lighter twist. I'm gonna start with the lightest color. I don't mind if there's a bit more yellow going in. I just want it to be a little uneven. So, okay. I'm not sure if you guys can really see what I'm doing, but this is now a much lighter, Yes, today is a fall theme. It's cooled off a bit these last couple of weeks, which uh, has helped. Okay. Mm -hmm. Twisting it up. And yeah, it's fun. I haven't done it in a while where I've like started with something and been like, these are the colors, this is my inspiration, this is what I want to do. Um, and so if you don't have your own mini pumpkins from your garden, you could play around with this yourself by um, going and getting like some mini pumpkins or some faux fall leaves or something from, uh, I think the craft stores all have their fall decor stuff around now. Okay, so I've got 
three twisted hanks. Um, and then, yeah, so the, if you're just tuning in, the colors today, the white of the pumpkin is actually a really good match for the yarn already. Then there's this sort of yellow um, that's from some of these stripy pumpkins. And then, of course, there's the pumpkin orange and the green of the leaves and some of the brown from the spot and stem. And actually, just so that you guys are aware, let me grab... last year were a little bit happier, maybe because I watered them a bit more, but they were bigger. So this is the, the color, oh actually the color, so these ones I harvested about a year ago and some of them are still totally fine and this is the one that I harvested this week. So there's a big size difference, but the yellow as it sort of ripens turns that yellowy orange gets a little more orange. So something around that is the shade that I am hoping for. I'm glad you like my pumpkins. I am so proud of growing them. I have one big, well, it's maybe the size of like, maybe like this big or something, but it, an animal took a bite out of it. So I can't, I can't use it, bring it inside because it's gonna like, go bad, which is a bummer. All right, let's bring the pot over. Okay, because we are at, okay, can reduce the heat, because we're at a boil. All right. Oh, good, and you guys can see in. Um, okay, I'm going to reduce the heat some more, and where is my tablespoon? Oh, I need to get my vinegar. So let's see, 16 cups of water. Let's start with, let's start with lower acid and see. We're gonna, let's do three tablespoons of vinegar to start off with. One, two, it's approximate, three. So 16 cups of water, plus three vinegar. All right, and how much of the yellow do I want to add? How much did I mix? I mixed about a third of a cup, but I don't know if that's going to be too much or not enough. Oh, shoot, that's vinegary now. Although, I guess I don't know why I'm freaking out a little bit. It's not that I'm freaking out, but uh, I'm always worried about adding acid to the dyes when I'm doing food coloring because they crash out, but that is a lot less of a concern with acid dyes. Okay, I've got this yellow that we mixed. Let's do one. Let's start with two tablespoons of that yellow color. Um, I might end up needing to mix more of it, but this is some place for us to start. Um, I'm not sure, Mary Ellen. Um, I started playing around with that a long, long time ago. Um, there's some early videos, uh, but you might, you might have encouraged me to re-look at it. The, I've got some videos with it from, I'm not sure what year. Okay. This is not looking like not a lot of dye to me, but let's. Prongs on hand so I can stick them in fast. I'm going to sort of just plop and stick and stick. All right, and that's actually not bad. 
Yeah, I'm glad I didn't add more because this, maybe I should have started with one. I mean, I'm not going to worry about it, but you can see that uh, that sort of went pretty fast. Okay, let's move you. I don't need more of that right now. And where is, oh, okay, this is going to pop them in here. I could leave them in longer, but I don't really want to. I'm going to pop them up to the side to cool off. And they are untwisting themselves over there. And so there's still some yellow in here, but I'm not too worried about that. Although maybe, maybe I'll soak it up. So I've got the, the yarns sitting off to the side. And oh, you can have a dye party. Awesome. Uh, yarn dyeing parties are great. I think because, I, honestly, I'm curious because it looks like it's so translucent, like the color, it looks like there's not a ton of color in there, but the volume of water was bigger than what I normally do. Let's just take I grabbed I have a hank of stroll fingering weight yarn. And this one I'm going to twist a little more. I'm just going to twist it and drop it in to soak up whatever is left, which might not be very much. But there's definitely, can you tell there's definitely some color in there? I'm going to leave that in the timer. Yeah, maybe if I was going to redo this, because this yellow is a bit, <laughs> looking at it, yellow is a bit brighter. But that's okay. It's inspired. <laughs> like I'm looking at this now and I'm like, oh, the yellow that I'm getting in that stroll is cl a little closer to what I wanted. Um, this is why it's always good to start low and, and work your way up. Um, I'm curious now. Where is the... It's grabbing a video. I'm curious. Yeah, so this is my very early, I'm going to drop a link into a video. This is one of the, and it's actually like a sunset colorway. Um, here is my first twisted hank. Just drop that in the chat. Yeah, I took, um, I twisted it. Oh, I can put my face up now. I twisted it and I used Easter egg dye tablets um, around it. And then I tried one. After that, I was like, oh, let's try breaking violet on it. And I was like, this didn't really break. I think because like there was so much dye in there that it just sort of all absorbed. And I got this like cool purple mottled thing. Um, can I read the questions out loud first? Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty bad, pretty bad about that. Um, I, Marlene, I'll try to do, I'll try to do better. Uh, Okay, I have size 10 feet too. Um, all right, so if you're just tuning in, in the dye pot, I started with 16 cups of water. I added three tablespoons of vinegar. And then I added two um, tablespoons, the color one, 
two tablespoons of the yellow mixture. I added two tablespoons of the yellow mixture and then I removed it before the dye had exhausted because the color was a bit brighter than what I was initially going for. Um, but then I just popped in a skein of the Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn to help soak up everything that was left over. And yeah, now, um, in, so I set a timer and so in like two minutes I'll take the Stroll out and actually I'll see how the other guys are doing. All right, let me make my face go away. Do, 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 do. I need to see it gets hot. Yeah, so I'm sort of opening these up. All right, I definitely don't have a lot of white left. <laughs> oh no, there's some white in there. <laughs> see, this is why my style and what I usually say is, oh dear, that's hot. Um, you know, when you start wanting something really, really specific, uh, you might not, uh, you know, it's better to start with something, you know, and like, let's see what happens and then you won't be as disappointed with the results. But uh, I think that, you know, we're going to get something that feels fall inspired no matter what. Um, but maybe I had want, should have started with a tighter twist that first time. Um, who knows, maybe our stroll friend here that's like doing the seconds will end up being closer to the colorway that I originally wanted. <laughs> but I also decided to try this with three hanks at once because I wanted to look at how similar and different they are. Okay, got those all aside. I might end up needing to add some more water and acid, but yeah, those are still a little too warm. Oh, I didn't wait for the timer to go off, but there's five seconds left. So. <laughs> yeah, so now I'm just waiting for them to cool off so that way I can comfortably twist it again. Um, and then we'll add some of the orange. Oops. Uh, I was like, sometimes I lose track of my train of thought. But yeah, I'm going to be sitting down now. So if you guys have any questions, let me know. And now's a good time. But, and since you guys are watching while we're waiting for things to cool off, um, if you would like to support cabinets and the whole, uh, everything in these videos you see, if you enjoy it, there's a dollar sign at the bottom of the chat. It's sort of like um, a tip jar. Um, it's called Super Chats. It can make your um, comments stay up longer. And that's one way that you can support the channel. You can also sign up for the cabinets Patreon. There's a link to that in the video description. Um, and I do also have an Etsy store. Uh, where I sell the yarn that I dye in my videos. The processing time, um, I just increased the processing time because I will be away from the office for a little while. But if someone places an order in the Chemnitz Creations shop today, I can, if it's like one of the ready to ship items, I'll be able to get that to the post office tomorrow, um, tomorrow morning. So, uh, but then otherwise things will ship out once I get back, but I have that in the shop announcement. Uh, Be like, where is my phone? Um, we just have to check for messages from school. Uh, but yeah, the and then oh, if you're tuning in, uh, I'll grab the pumpkins again in a second <laughs> to show you guys. But yeah, I think that actually now. Um, if you guys want to add some questions to the chat, now's a good time for that. But also, um, I'm going to send you to a brief commercial break. And I will be back and continue once the timer goes off.
and not everyone is going to see an ad, so if you're not seeing an ad play, don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> YouTube decides who, who sees them, but I appreciate you guys sticking through an ad break because that helps uh, support all of this as well. <laughs> I try to not insert one into these um, any more frequent than like once every uh, half hour or so. It's hard for me to know if it. Yeah, the yellow is a bit brighter than the one I wanted. That's okay. It'll still be, still be pretty. Color mixing and color theory are, you know, maybe to have made the yellow a little less bright. I, I wouldn't have wanted to shift to green, but sometimes I know if you add, like, you know, to, if you have an orange, if you, or for like a, if you have a purple and you have a tiny bit of yellow to it, that you can shift away from brightness. I don't know. Color mixing is not a strength of mine, and that's one reason why I recently ordered a bunch of different colors of Dharma acid dyes, so that way I can play around with, with a lot more, but then I have some more pre-mixed colors to start with, because I think I have an easier time saying like, okay, I want to combine these two colors together, but then I have a lot harder time, I like, okay, let's mix three or four, and planning what you get, but the inspiration today, they just tuned in, are some little pumpkins that I grew myself. So the pumpkin leaf, the pumpkin itself, these uh, orangey, well, it's this one still that ripened a bit, so it's got a little bit of green in it still, but it's yellow and orange. And then there's some white, but there might not be white left. So I don't think I twisted it enough. But uh, we need to sort of see what, what we get and how it comes out. Um, all right. I, okay, there's only 30 seconds left on the timer. So then I'm gonna go in back like, to the pot and squeeze up some water and yeah, and we'll, we'll carry on. But I'm glad that you guys are all able to join me today. And let me give another plug because it's Indigo Week. And this week I'm sharing, so there's six different videos uh, for my first ever Indigo Vat. One is the complete failure, my first attempt. The second is fixing that, and then the third, which came out this morning, is I got a working vat and all of that jazz. So now I am spinning back up. Squeezing out some of the extra water, hopefully I'm not making a tangled mess, can help things cool off a bit faster. Hot. <laughs> it's like the yarn doesn't feel hot until then like I try to twist it, or not twist it, try to squeeze it, and then all of a sudden it's feeling, yeah, that's still warm. The stroll is still warm. Um, end up with non-tangled. So when you're playing around with dyeing yarn, if you do end up with a tangle, try waiting for the yarn to dry before fixing it, and that usually works nicely for me. Um, One of the other things I'm curious about today is, um, oh dear, no, 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 no yarn birth, no yarn birth. 
Mama doesn't like yarn bar. Mama didn't. Mm. I wish I could zoom out to show you guys how I am dealing with this. <laughs> there we go. Okay. The other thing I do is look for the ties. Um, okay. And so there definitely is some weight in here left. Let me, uh, I guess I should try to take some in progress pictures and at least I can put it up on Instagram. Uh, to show you guys what they look like at each step. But the reason for starting with the yellow first is that this is going to get sort of the most covered up. Um, okay. Where it is? And snap the picture. I wish I could snap a picture and then I wish I could easily snap a picture and then add it into the stream. That is not trying to decide now it's not about the like how I'm retwisting although I'm sort of turning this around uh, yeah you guys can't really see so I think I want to up the amount of acid because at this stage going forward I want the colors to strike a bit faster and which will give us a little bit more resist. Here we go. So you can see sort of the, the colors that we've got there. So the high, like the, yeah, if I wanted more white, I think that I should have started with some higher acid and then some more of the whites would have shown through. or stayed behind because the colors would have been a little less shallow. They are nice and cool now. And even if you are starting from the same ends where you did the first time when you're twisting again, it's not, um, I guess you can sort of, as you twist with the, when there's more colors, you can try to like keep some things hidden or some more areas shown, but We've got this nice yellow semi-solid tonal but here yep yeah, there we go here are the three hanks twisted again ready for the next level and so this colorway or this technique gives you a non-repeating colorway it gives you non-repeating it's random it could even be asymmetric uh, so you might like by doing this you might not end up with like perfectly matched stocks or something like that but all right let's add some more acid now the water volume is less now um, so it is less two it's like three more tablespoons of white vinegar Um, which means that it's more than double the concentration that we had at the beginning. Um, hopefully this is, this, the math is making sense, but because there's less than 16 cups in here, adding the same amount of acid is, the total acid concentration is higher than double. All right, now how much of the orange? When I did the yellow, 
I, add, I started with two tablespoons of the yellow color. I want the orange to be deeper. Um, I want it to be deeper and a bit brighter. So, and here is the orangey color that I mixed. Okay, let's start with four. One, two, three, four. And this, for this color, the proportions that I mixed were a third of a cup of uh, my 1% yellow, which I say 1% in quotes because it was not really in solution well. So, so I started with uh, a third of a cup of that, and then I did eight drops of my 1% solution of red and eight drops of pink. And so that is how I got there. Um, and, okay, I've got my three hanks. Let's put them in. Now, I might end up deciding that I want some more orange, and then I can just add some more orange to the pot. But let's give this a little bit of time. The pot feels a little more crowded this time. Oh, you know what I should have tried doing this time? I should have done like so you can start a highlight reel from a live stream. So I could cut out some of like the waiting steps. Um, that could have been cool. I'm now curious. What's funny is that this is looking very, very yellow. I mean, there was the, the yellow beneath it. Um, but it is not looking very orange. Okay, I'm not gonna wait. I'm gonna go ahead and add some more orange. And we're now getting into the territory of why colorways might not be the easiest to replicate. Um, because the yarn's already in the pot. Let's add one, two, that's three more tablespoons. And I'm now going to, you see some of that would strike where I added it. Okay, I don't remember how much I added at the beginning, maybe four, and then I added three. That's still not quite as orange as I want. So let's give it, I'll let the timer go off. There's three, like three and a half minutes left on there. Uh, but I'll flip it over in just a moment. So the three cases went from your four to one yarn in the pot, three to one orange. All right. But yeah, let me know if you guys have any questions. Oops. <laughs> um, and oh, I just now that I'm sitting here. Uh, where is the live chat? Where's the link? And well. <laughs> Too high, too high. Um, sorry if it gets a little like clippy, but I forgot to share this link.
and are you guys all in the Chemist Lab Facebook group? It's a group for Chemist fans. Um, and yeah, mostly for all things fiber arts, but mostly right now it is um, mostly yarn dyeing. Uh, and everything you guys create is really, really awesome. Um, And I see that there's already some people who have requested to join, and I'll deal with that after. But let me just pop the group chat, or not the group, the, the link to the Facebook group into the chat. And here we go. Um, this is acid dyes today. Uh, yeah, I am start. I started with uh, some of my 1% Jacquard stock solutions, and these are stock solutions that I mixed back in January. Um, so I'm not sure if they are exactly 1% anymore because some of them have some sediment and whatnot, but I've still been getting gorgeous, gorgeous colors out of them. Um, that's looking a bit more orange to me. I'm going to pop up. Oh, wait, no. There's 10 seconds on the timer. I can just finish it and wait. <laughs> um, You've used yet. Yeah. Oh, gotta make this go right. So when you did peachy yarn, you did yellow, pink, and green separately. Yeah, I'm hoping that when I do the green, I will get some brown. But it's hard to say. But if I decide I want some more orange, what I'm gonna do is flip this. So let's see. I think I do want. And that's looking pretty good, but so I'm flipping this over because I added the orange sort of straight on top. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add, I think I'm going to go ahead and add two tablespoons more of the orange color because it's just two. So this is now almost the entirety of the orange that I had mixed. Um, so, so this is about two thirds of a cup. Let me see, and I'm just sort of mixing this up a little bit. I'm gonna give this five more minutes. Um, I'll say, so, did I just put some of this there? 20? Milliliters. So that's about 180 milliliters. So this stage has approximately, um, I think so far, I've used, this stage has approximately 1.8 grams of dye. That's sort of for reference. And as I am running, 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 um, oh, I wanted to write down what I did. Not that I think you'd be able to reproduce this because there's a lot of um, five men, what yarn, plus two T. This is going yeah, this way. And the guy that put this in. <laughs> Not that I'll remember what to let my notes mean. <laughs> um, you got orange and yellow and pops of green. Ooh. Yeah, I think, so I don't want to add green to the pop first when I do the green. I think that I'm going to, um, I'm, what I might do is I'll twist it again, and then I'm going to pour some of the green sort of on top in sort of a row to let the green, but I'll have them twisted still, and then I'll flip them and maybe add some more. So I think for the next step, I want to up the acid even more. Um, but we will see. Oh, so what color acid dye? Um, I started with the, the four colors I'm using today are sky blue, sun yellow, fire red, and pink. Um, yay, I'm glad that you could join. But yeah, and then my inspiration, so my homegrown, Rebecca grown pumpkin and their leaves. So, whoa, that is 
sort of what I'm going for. Um, but yeah, it should be it should be fun. And the waiting is always um, Whoa, okay, I just pe peeked in the group and someone's doing some really cool ice dyeing. Um, <laughs> but oh, it's so hard for me not to go peek. I know this time from just when I've moved it that with the higher acid, the dye is striking more on the outside. So we might end up with a fair amount of yellow in here, but we'll see. And then, oh yeah, I've got the, uh, the stroll. I've been using this to soak up some of the extra dye, but so let me add some of that water back so the stroll can cool off. Um, but yeah, with less dye in, oh no, Rebecca, yeah, grab it there. Okay, with less dye in the pot, um, there's a lot more of the white left here um, in this one. And so I think it's almost a little closer to what I was sort of going for initially, but before the green, I'll sort of pop this in to, what would be really funny is if I get the colorway that I sort of wanted with the <laughs> yarn that, oh God, with the yarn that was like the soak up um everything because i think i had hoped to have a little more white left behind after the yellow and i don't think that i did so i think that that's really funny really 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 funny all right um oh that's a good orange that's feeling very pumpkin-y to me no, we're back up. There's 34 seconds left. You can wait those 34 seconds. <laughs> oh, yeah, but really, I just, I wanted to play around with this. I had this idea to do this sort of colorway, and because I had just harvested the pumpkins, and I was thinking of what a pretty palette they were. And I know a pumpkin inspiration is not, like, the most unique thing in the world. However, like, I don't know, I like being inspired from my garden and for like the rhubarb dyeing video was a lot of fun. So it's nice to play with the garden. But here's one of the pumpkins from last year. And that one actually has brighter yellow. So maybe I'm not so far off. Okay. All right, I'm gonna remove these. So as I'm moving it, you can see Sort of like in that twist that there's some of that yellow left. Just trying to let some of that water out. It takes a little bit of time to pull. I bet the color that's left in here, honestly, is that yellow. Some yellow, and I know when I rinse these, there's going to be yellow coming out. It is not my favorite of the acid dyes, not by a long stretch, um, mainly because of its solubility. But ooh, look at that that color peeking out. But really, I thought sometime I want to do a colorway that's mostly green with like a hint with some pops of orange and yellow. But I need to think about how I would do that without, um, I need to think about how I would do that without uh, just ending up with brown. Because if I had the deep, um, you know, I might need to do some like over this or something first. But I am gonna go ahead, since I think that that's basically yellow there, I'm gonna take this last little bit of orange and let that go in before I add the stroll. Sort of rinsing that out. There was, because I don't really wanna do the second twist in just another yellow. Okay, maybe that is just another yellow. Oh, goodness me. Okay, let's add. I've got this red. Let's do. Let's 
some drops of red in there. That'll give us a little more, that'll give us some more orange, sort of on the fly. It's a funny one struck. Ooh, I like what happened where it struck. That's sort of what I'm going to be trying to do with the green. Um, actually, I like that a lot. Let me do. Is just with the red. I'm going to do this in a few other places too. Oh, that's a little more than I wanted, but. Oh no! My twist came undone. Okay, I gotta stop moving it. <laughs> My twist came undone! Okay, well, if I like where this one is, then I'm just going to remove it. Oh, that's got some good orange and red. Okay, that's really pretty. Um, still want to soak up this last bit of orange, so I'm going to go get another skein of yarn. Okay, pop that aside. Okay, that's really cool looking. Um, this is why I came downstairs with just a bunch of yarn. Um... <laughs> Oh. You know, sort of like each pumpkin grows a little differently. We've got some other uniqueness going on. This one, I've got some dry swish DK. And I, am I going to twist you up? Okay, I'll twist you just to be a little consistent. That's a nice color. So you can see how much the water level has gone down. Okay. It's actually a really nice color. Um, it's very peachy. Okay. This is the thing with having tons of yarn in the house. There's always some to help clean up. Oh, goody, Call, um, questions. Um, you did a low emergent green with pops of yellow, red, and some purple. Yeah, share it. Go ahead and share it. Um, it's reminding me of koi fish. Ooh, that's fun. <laughs> so my uh, father-in-law got some new koi fish for, they have a koi pond. And they bought the fish. There were, I think, six fish. The next day, could not find any of the fish. And that seems a little fast for me. I know hawks will eat the koi. That's what happened to the old koi. But, you know, right away, I think eventually they, two of the fish did sort of come out and one's a lot bigger <laughs> than the other one. <laughs> um, wait, add in. Oh yes, for the koi. If I were to add in black, then that would be very, very koi-like. Um, oh, that's fun. Did I? No, I didn't set a timer. Um, I'm not expecting this guy back to exhaust, but it's nice to... Uh, also convince myself that there's not a ton of color left. I mean, there's some orange and, okay, we've opened up, which is fine. Ooh, that is lovely. Um, let's see if it'll absorb some of those yellows. But I will need to add more Oh, maybe not. So, yeah, our orange, oh, I should spread them out a bit. Yeah, they're, they are very, very warm. I, I wish that I could easily show the whole thing, but uh, hot. I'm like trying to untwist very carefully. <laughs> it's 
like, nope, too hot, too hot. So it's like I've just popped off one end so that way I can try to like pick up and untwist in a moment. Oh, I can use the tongs. But I don't want to lose the tank. There we go. That's pretty. Yeah, not much white left, but there is a lot of good yellow and orange. Let me pick this up, just sort of show you guys. There we go. Um, so you can kind of see the, yeah, the yellow and orange. It's, the colors are brighter than it's looking. That's always the problem I have with these live streams and the camera, but I promise they're really pretty. Mm. Well, that's cleared. Okay. Not that the other guys are ready at all, but I wanted to add some more water and a lot of acid. What do you got? Whoa. We need a ton more water. Well, let's see how much more water I can squeeze out of these hangs now. Nope, still too hot. <laughs> it's like I'm picking them up and I'm like, nope, nope, still too hot, still too hot. But at least I'm shift, nope, that end is just too, too hot. All right, I'm going to pop cover on that because I sort of want to see what kind of volume I get to. Because I think low immersion with these greens is sort of what I want. I mean, I don't mind sort of covering it with the green. Um, I wouldn't mind there being a lot of green on there at all. So I have to think if I want to just do like some pops of green on there or if I want to do more all over green. And then ultimately I will, you know, make the final decision, but I'd love to hear what you think because I think that with the lot of yellow left, doing like more all over green could actually be really cool. It'd be a more, you know, bring more of the leaf influence in. But I know I I love pumpkins. I don't love the way that the leaves smell when they break. Um, did I film on? Did I film the yarn yet? Um, I have been doing. So we've done two steps of dyeing for the yarn so far, and then there will be more later. But the inspiration today, basically, and this is last year's pumpkin, but is some of these mini pumpkins that I grow. I like this one because it's kind of a triangle. Um, I mean, it's a roundish triangle. But look at it. Isn't that cute? <laughs> I think this one, like, ah, they, I, I love pumpkins. Um, have you ever had yarn totally felt when you were dyeing it? When I was dyeing it, no. Washing it, um, I definitely, it, I never ended up with yarn that is unusable. Um, I have, I had some yarn that was like slightly felted. I mean, I was able to rescan it with no issue. If you look at the yarn, you can still see the individual plies, but you can tell that like the plies, you could separate them, but it's not easy. Um, and it's definitely the place where I run into that problem is in the washing. Some yarns like Knit Picks Palette Fingering, which is um, a little twist that's fairly lofty, that when you dye it will stick to itself. And even without like being lightly felted, it's just the, the way the fibers are and why it's great for color work because it will just sort of stick to itself nicely. Um, so that is one that, um, like, but rescaining it again isn't a problem. Um, so there is, yeah, there's that. But I think that usually the place where people I'm realizing might come in the most danger for felting is the washing. Um, I, oh, that's what I wanted to do today, too. Oh, well, well maybe I'll have some time this afternoon. Um, or I'll do it when I get back. Uh, a friend of mine um, did like a surprise 
what, what do we call it? Like the super special surprise spin along. Um, and she sent me some surprise roping, which unfortunately had been felted. I was still able to spin it. It was not easy. It required a bit to separate it, but I was able to get yarn. But I've only done half of it so far, so you can only do the other half. But it's from the the washing. Like the more you rub, the more you squeeze and wring, and the more risk that you have to get ending up with something felted. So if you're just starting off, then maybe a super wash yarn is a way to go. And Oh, I guess the Nitpicks Wool of Andy Superwash um, is on sale right now. So. Oh, yay! You <laughs> Nicole, I'm seeing the, the, the yarn you um, did. So you did low immersion. Um, oh, yeah, your green yarn is beautiful. Lots of vinegar. Yeah. Okay. Low immersion might be the, the, the way to go. Cause I was trying to think like what I was wanting to do was I was wanting to do like in my head, a green and then do like orange and yellow speckles. And I just don't feel like that that would work. Like I would want to do, I mean, I could do the yellow and orange first and then do some resist and maybe glaze with a green or something. Um, but, um, oh, here's a question. What do I do with all the mini pumpkins that I grow? Well, the ones last year, and so far, I think I only have two pumpkins left and maybe three of the gourds. The rest have started to rot, and so I've had to throw them away. Um, I actually tied on, I used them, I hooked at Thanksgiving, and I tied little name tags to them um, and used them as like the place setting decoration. But in general, sometimes we decorate them and like put faces on them. Um, but we usually just have them all around our house. Um, if there's a ton, some of them end up outside. Uh, oh, pellet was the yarn that I started with. Pellet was the first 100% yarn I ever dyed. And it was totally, totally fine. I think that if you're going to use it yourself, it's not a problem at all. Um, it was just that like some of the yarn, I was like, oh, this doesn't look as pretty because the fibers, it wasn't felted, but they were sort of clumped. And so then I wanted to rescan it before I gave some of those out. So, yeah, let's go see if I can deal with oh, this yarn. Okay. Still gonna be, they're still really hot. But maybe if I ship them, this one isn't, it's still a little hot. Bringing out some more liquid will help. And I'll try to remember to take a picture. But yeah, I think the more I think about it, I keep going back and forth whether I want to um, sort of put this in and do some green slots. But I think, I think I'm going to twist it and I'm going to sort of do what I did with the orange but with the green. Um, I think that that's what I want. And again, like, gosh, come on. I don't mind if, I don't mind if there is some, should be what's it. These might need end up needing rescaining if I end up with something super twisted. Uh, I don't mind if I get some brown today. Um, actually, some brown, it's funny because I don't have any brown jacquard. So I couldn't, like, I could have tried to mix a brown, but that uh, frightened me a bit, to be honest. Um, not that, like, brown is scary. It's just mixing my own from primaries was intimidating to me. Uh, okay, here's the last one. Yeah, so we'll see if we get how like green our green will be and if we get browns and 
we will we will see but let's go ahead and add i think i'm gonna add another four cups of water cups of water. Let's do one, two, three, four tablespoons of vinegar. So I've got my little diary. Um, for three plus four cups water plus can I do four tablespoons? <laughs> I get so distracted. But again, this has so many like micro steps that this is not something that is like super reproducible. <laughs> uh, ah, yeah, the it's funny because I still I've used the my first ever skein of palette. I use that in hat and mittens, and I still have more of it. I have enough to do potentially like another hat. I mean, it was color work hat because um, I had seen I had seen some beautiful like color work with lock and then a variegated yarn, and it looked like stained glass, and that was sort of what I wanted to emulate and recreate. But uh, actually. While we let the water continue to heat up, I think I'm going to send you guys for another just quick commercial break. Um, I, am I, oh, I'm not even, am I not live when I'm watching on the thing? Oh gosh. Uh, no. Oh my gosh, what is my preview doing? For some reason I wasn't live. No, let me be live. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I'm, anyway, I'm gonna send you guys for a quick commercial break. Thank you for your patience. This helps cover everything. Not everyone will see an ad, but if you do, um, thank you. And yeah, that's the spiel. But you can also check out the, if you're not, like since I'm just sort of vamping, you can check out the links in the video description for some more stuff. More chemnet being things. Actually, I might use this time to take a picture of our step two yarns, which are now nice and cool. Because I'm realizing, I keep saying each time I do one of these that, oh, I need to get a webcam, a second webcam. Um, and I really, really do. I really, really do. Because if I had a second webcam, then I could like swap between. But I'm really happy. Um, nope, not. Nope. <laughs> I said that there was going to be a lot of talking to myself today. Here is one of the, the hanks. We've got our orange and yellow patches. And this time as I'm twisting it, I sort of want the orange on the inside. Ideally, also some of this yellow, um, some of the white patches will be on the inside. Obviously, like all some of all that would be visible. But if there's a way to hold it so that can happen, then that is sort of what I am going for. And I don't want to do a super, super, super high twist or anything because you don't want to stretch the fibers, but this is a higher twist than what I did last time.
Yay. And so because it's wet, what I've done is I've got half sort of around my wrist as I twist. Um, that sort of helps me. Just the second one. These are sort of beautiful on their own without even these are beautiful just as is without even any of the um the grain but i am committed But I keep going back and forth. Okay, we're still waiting for the pot to heat up. Should I do some like smaller, like should I put the yarn in and then add some green and sort of like twist it around and add sort of like greenish speckles to this? Or should I over dye the whole thing, the whole shebang with green um, and then end up with some more greenish patches? So here's the third one. Um, let me know in the comments what you think. And usually that, it's funny, I, it's like the, sometimes when you're asking a question, it's not about the answer. It's about like, you know, when people tell you what they think, then you figure out what it is that you wanted. Oh, and as I am doing this, okay, stroll is hot. Um, curious. Oh, funny. Okay, so here's one thing with the stroll. So when I untwisted it, see there's this whole section of white, and then the other side has color. And so that's what I mean when saying that this can be a really, really asymmetric technique. Oh, that's hot. Um, it's really asymmetric because uh, you could end up with the orange coverage throughout the whole skein. You could end up with, uh, you know, that white could only be on half of it. It could end up being not super balanced. Um, but I think that that is part of the fun. Okay. Small splashes of green. Um, I could hand paint the green on. I don't want to, though. Um, one of the questions was, could I hand well, can I hand paint the green on? And the, the answer is absolutely. Um, I just don't feel like it. <laughs> I need to. So the reason why I don't want to uh, just dip a little. Uh, do I have? Let me grab a dry skein. <laughs> so the if if the skein were untwisted, and I were to just dip a little, like I think that that would be. But given that this is an asymmetric technique, if, oh, I wish I had, do I have a colored skein? That would be a little easier to, to show. So when, when you have a skein and you twist it up, there's always like parts of the skein that's against each other. That's sort of like on the inside. Um, so that has less exposure. So if I were to just dip, say, the tip of this into the green, there would be this long section of green in some of it and then none in some of the other spots, which would be fine, but it would be way, um, the green would ultimately be pretty unbalanced. Um, and I mean, it still could be fairly unbalanced uh, adding the like little, excuse me, drops of green, but yeah. I don't think 15 seconds would be enough to get a lot of color, but I, yeah, I mean, I can start, I can do, I can do a little bit of green. We can see how it absorbs and then I can add some like bigger pops of the green around. I don't regret this. I might regret this. <laughs> uh, but you know, you never know. You 
until you try. I've got like, nope, I almost cut away the audio. It's like I've got my original vision and then other thoughts. But yes, if it looks like the color is doing too much, you can always remove the yarn. Hmm. Hmm, okay. How much of the green do I want to start off with? Let's do one, two, three, four tablespoons. Okay, okay guys, you ready? I'm going to tell Keith I was going live. Okay. You ready? Here's our pretties. In. Ooh, that's cool looking. Okay. But... See, I want more color. That's why I would do just 12 seconds. That's looking really cool, but I want more of it to absorb. It's absorbing kind of slowly. Okay. Woo, I'm nervous. So I'm not gonna sit down because I want to keep checking. Um, I, I don't think you guys can, oh, maybe I should show you what my legs are doing. Um, okay, so I'm like, doing this little like dance as I'm watching. <laughs> Thought you guys would appreciate that. Um, oh, Mary Ellen, it would have been cool to do three different techniques on them. Um, oh, that is looking really pretty, you guys. Um, I'm really, really liking this. Uh, I'm like, it's not even really a brown. The green is like subtle. I might want a little more green actually, but it's doing some really lovely, lovely things in here. Um, I'm not sure if you can really tell, but it's giving like a good depth to the, the orange. I'm going to give this, let's give it two minutes and then I might add a little more green. But yeah, I should have done, I should have just done all three separately. Um, I mean, one of the things that like I was curious today, and the reason why I'm dying three all together is that I, this isn't for a particular project or anything. I just wanted to see how different and similar they were. Not that I'm planning on rescaining these, but I did do the one video where I was speckling with Kool-Aid and then it was, the yarns weren't feeling balanced. And so I checked in, two of the skeins were really balanced, one wasn't. Um, these I would just call asymmetric, non-repeating colorways like from the get-go. I don't expect them to be super balanced, but I think that, yeah, it's fun. Thank you, thank you for joining us. And yeah, the replay will be up. Um, wait, just uh, the replay will be up later if you want to catch the end and then Eventually I'll have a recap of the finished dried yarns so that way it can be like a little better like resolution and color. Uh, I don't know, maybe I would do a mini recap tomorrow. They're not gonna be dry then though, but that might be after I get back to the office. office. Um, <laughs> ooh, ooh, I see more colors. I would, yes. Um, the dry rub would be real, ooh, the dry rub would be really, really cool on top of this. Um, you're thinking of a crochet chain to do a twist. Ooh, yeah, I love dying crochet chains. Um, I have one video that's already out where I did, I did a crochet chain of a crochet chain, and then I did a crochet chain of that held together, and that was really cool. And I just did 
that one I dip dyed in violet, Wilton's violet, and then I have another one that will be coming out soonish. Um, brown speckles later, that's not a bad idea. I don't, so I have not yet done speckling with acid dyes. I'm sort of on my list. We're starting to clear. Um, this green is lovely and the orange showing through is lovely. I do think I want a bit more of it. Um, I'm liking where it's going. So I'm going to add, okay, I think that, did I set with four for this one? I think I'm going to add, I think I'm going to add three more. Or maybe I'll add two more <laughs> as I'm doing this. And there we go. Sort of on top. And I'm not, oh, I do want to move it. So say I'm not going to move it around. But the reason why I am going to move it around is I'm hoping that these will be somewhat similar. Oh, that's so cool looking. Oh, I love it. Because um, we got some nice uneven absorption even in that part. Okay. I'm going to give this three minutes and then I'm going to, well, maybe I'll keep checking on it, but I'll take it out. And I will try to, like, I'll move things around so that way you guys will be able to see this colorway sort of laid out before the, the live stream ends. But, okay, I was nervous. The green combined with... And the thing is, I like browns, so I don't think it would have been a problem. I was just worried, I don't know, sometimes like layering colors can be a little scary, but it's worth going for it, I guess. Um, you're scared the other colors will be muddy or muted? Yeah, when I, they could be, but I'm liking, even if the whole thing ends up very green overall, I would be okay with it because it would be more like the pumpkin tree with like, because you see the leaves and then you see the pops of color beneath it. So I'd be okay with that. Um, but yeah, I feel like I need to get the, so there's an elephant in the piggy book, waiting is not easy. I feel like sometimes for these live streams, I need to have it like right here and I need to pull it out. Waiting is not easy. <laughs> not for you guys, for myself. I get impatient. If I'm, if I'm not doing a live stream, if I'm filming, say, a Dive Pot Weekly episode, I will sort of set up the pot. When I set the timer, I'll go and I'm usually I'm like editing or doing social media or something like while that's going on. But when I'm sitting here, I'm like, because so I'm right here. The pot is just right there. Um, see my, I can't even see my hand. There I am. <laughs> <laughs> just to give you guys a little bit of the angle um but yeah if you are enjoying this video please subscribe to the chemist tutorial youtube channel and give the video a like um that would be super super awesome um and yeah if you have any questions let me know uh, uh -oh. nope that's all good i'm Tomorrow's the last day of school, um, or the last day of camp. And actually, it's sad. Okay, this is this is really sad. So tomorrow's the last day of camp, and so it's the last day that my boys are going to be together in the same like school or camp for maybe like three years. And um. Lucas is getting sad. They're both still at the same school. It's just the pre the pre K is in a different building from the like preschool um, programs. For some reason, they have the preschool with like eighth graders and yeah. Um, but they're going to be separated and like it's going to be two drop offs, two pickups, and thankfully the times are staggered. But uh, okay, let's let's see. Oh, that's what I wanted. 
Oh, that's great. And you can see some of that orange and yellow peeking through. This is awesome. This is great. I'm so glad I added a bit more green. So, so, so glad. Oh, and see some of those original hues. Okay, it's opening up a bit. You can see some of those original hues are in there as well. So I think, I think this is good. I think this is going to be really good. Um, Okay, you can't see my dancing feet right now, but I'm doing dancing feet again. Um, okay, here is our stroll. And because I could twist and put it in, but I'm feeling... I'm not going to twist it. I'm just going to put it in. There's not a ton of color left in here right now. Um... Okay, but here's what I'm going to do with this one. So this one isn't twisted. I just put it in. I have a bunch more green. I actually have a bunch more other colors. So I might... So this is not quite low immersion um, because the water level isn't low. It's like immersion or medium immersion, but there is a relatively high amount of acid. So we will get um, potentially some small greens and some other greens and could be cool. <laughs> it's really fun to just throw stuff together. It's something I really, really, really enjoy. But oh my goodness, you guys, this, this pumpkin yarn, I'm really excited to untwist it. But I don't really see brown here. I see, believe it or not, and my white balance is so off. Um, I see, it's like, I don't know, it's like green and orange without being brown. Um, I know that doesn't really make sense, but it's cool. It is really cool. Okay. Oh, yeah, your knit crate shipped. No, uh, that knit crate is on topic. I could, uh, where's my, uh, actually, I, is knit crate still, do they, I wonder if they still have some of the flash sale going on. But since knit crate was mentioned, let me just drop my knit crate link into the chat. Um, and now I'm curious if they still have the flash sale going on. Because so Knit Crate, this month they were having, if you sign up for the Knit Crate membership kit, they were having a flash sale. Ooh, they still are. Um, so if you sign up for the Knit Crate membership today, this is the flagship for $24.99, you can get a free um, crate as well for just paying the shipping. So for $29.99, you can get four, 400 grams of yarn. Um, they'll come in two different boxes. One of them I think will be the contemporary theme from, because it's from a couple months ago, uh, which actually, because from the picture that's showing there, if you want this deal, um, you know, follow my link, because then I get credit for referring you. And then wait for the page to load and it'll pop up and say flash sale. And then you go to the bottom, and say get my click on get my free crate but it looks like the one they're sending now is the bear yarn that's their marled like sock fingering weight base that i over dyed once and it's amazing and i love it so but also like so 29.99 for four for two basically two knit crates shipped to your door that in, that 29.99 includes the shipping <laughs> it includes international shipping it's just a mind boggling deal. Like I almost wish, like I, I like they, Nick Craig gives it to me for free so that way I share it, but like I almost want another one. <laughs> um, 
I have, this is, no, this isn't off topic. It's any quest, tendency question goes. The question is, have you dyed any of the bear hair yet? And the answer is no, not yet. Um, that is coming. Uh, <laughs> um, ooh, dropping the green. Um, I love the idea of pulling the hot yarn out and dropping the green on it in the cooling pan and then potentially like steaming it or something. Um, I think right now I have all of the yarns in the cooling pan, but that's something that definitely, I think I want to do, uh, I might do some more like live streams this fall focused on layering, layering of colors and basic, and by layering, I mean, you know, adding yarn to a dye pot multiple times and stuff. Um, oh, good. See, I love when someone else in the chat can sort of answer and give input on on a yarn you guys make me happy oh you can't see my face but you guys make me happy <laughs> oh i just yeah have have fun Ooh, you're thinking of buying a sweater quantity um that that's cool that's one thing i have never done oh, this is so pretty looking you guys um sort of shifting it to sort of get some of the other side. But I'm really, really liking what, so I've been using like the spoon to sprinkle it. I think if I was using the, I like the, one of the syringes, I could get like little speckles of, not speckles, but little like patches of color. But I'm very happy with whatever this is doing. I want to add a drop right there. <laughs> I'm very, very happy with whatever this is doing. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to wait to open up the green ones until I move that over to you guys. But next, I've been waiting for that to set. Okay, I'm going to squeeze this up a little bit. Some days, so I should be packing, but I don't want to pack. Okay, and then we've got the swish, which is this like creamy orange and yellow. Um, and then I still have, I've got some red, some pink, some blue. Technically that red, pink, and blue I could pour back into the bottles, but I want to dye more yarn. I want to dye more yarn. Du, 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 du. Um, how are we doing? This is pretty good. You guys, this is amazing. This colorway is just, oh, like it's not looking brown. I'm just amazed. I am so happy. And that might be a bit tangled. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, here is the swish that I just used to soak up stuff before. And I could do just green on it again, or I could do orange and pink, or I could go blue. Maybe I should do blue. I've got a lot of blue right there. Um, yeah, I think the bare hair yarn feels really, really soft too. I've been really happy with it. Okay, I've got a lot of blue, so I'm just gonna. Well, this is a fun way of speckling. I love low immersion stuff. Um, and a little bit of dye goes such a long way. 
Um, I just love being able to like buy. I'm really excited to use some of the acid dye powders more. Um, I know that, um, and when I've talked about using my dust mask, there's like, my dust mask is like, it's a certified for like keeping harmful like breathing particles out. Um, there are dust masks that are like annoyance dust masks. So like if you're working with like sawdust or like dust for some like carpentry or something that maybe you would use, but uh, the one that I have is like certified for chemicals and stuff. Ooh, orange and pink. Um, I'll definitely do, do I have some orange left? I don't know if I have the orange left, but yeah, I'll play with some of the pink. Um, I wanted to go a little unexpected, but I love how quickly things are striking. I have, so I broke down nine skeins of yarn, so I have a lot that I can play with. Um, well, thank you for hanging out and watching. Um, yeah, I under, understand the, the needing, the needing to go, go to work. Um, some of these live streams can be long sometimes. You got the free crate yesterday. Woohoo! Woohoo! Um, yeah, there's, so there's also a contest for whoever refers the most, um, people, but I think with the flash sale, everybody is referring more than normal. So I don't think I'm gonna, uh, come close to winning that, but. <laughs> Uh, I might have to do a knit crate post before I leave to try to like remind people about it. Um, what was I looking for? And oh yeah, if you guys are looking for something else to do today, check out the Indigo videos. Um, uh, Oh, they were, oh, it's funny. So this is a comment in another video saying that indigo isn't really wash fast, but indigo actually is extremely wash fast. Um, it can, it can certainly bleed and stuff, but indigo, there are garments that have been like, there's fabric swatches that were dyed with indigo that have lasted centuries and they're still blue. So it's a very, very stable color. Um, but it can, but when you get like blue jeans and stuff, the, I, I'm not sure if there's a difference with the natural and synthetic. Um, did you miss much? A bit, but I still have more dyeing to do. Um, so far, I, my inspiration today started with my pumpkins and I've got three, or I've got, I guess I've got three skeins in one color, right? one in another that are inspired by my pumpkin tree. And now I'm just, using up some of the leftover dyes that I have. Um, so I had this, this, uh, this is some swish that had soaked up some of the orange and I just added some blue and I'm now gonna flip it ish and add some more blue to this side. But here are my pumpkin-y vine inspired yarns which i think are looking a little dark because of the way where the light is but i will be opening up those shortly okay and i'm using little syringes and there just adding some bits of blue I am curious how this is striking pretty quickly. How sh like many layers this might go through. Um, but everything today is we're not worrying about like symmetric or non-symmetric. It's just about some fun colors. But I've got left over. Oh, I've still got some orange, red, pink, yellow, green, and blue. So, and I've got uh, two more skeins of stroll and two more skeins of swish. So I think what there's a request for orange and pink, I think, and 
I'm gonna turn this down. Actually, you know what I think I wanna do? I think I wanna open these up and show you guys. So I'm going to turn off this heat right now. Of course that burner is hot. I'm gonna cover it and I have it this on low on the other side. Here is the too hot. I need this roll. Let's go off to the side. That was a yarn that was also helping me clear the pot. But here are the three that I that were the main focus today. Let me see about what I can do for the color, um, so that way I can open these up. Color, oh, maybe I need to change the saturation. Sorry, guys, as I oh. how's my hand look? My hand looks a little too pink, but the yarn looks a bit better. Um, so sorry, I'm trying to get something that looks a little bit true for you guys. Okay. I'm going to open these up. First, we dyed it in a yellow. Then we dyed it in the orange. You see as you twist, there's like that line. Then finally, we did the green. And you can see like there's this long stretch of yellow and orange. There's some longer stretches of green, some shorter stretches of green. This is beautiful. Um, but then there's some of each of the individual colors behind as well. Ooh, that's hot. Hot, hot, hot. Whew. But yeah, there's still, there's, there's some bright orange, there's some muted orange, but this, oh, it worked! It worked, you guys! Happy dance, happy dance, happy dance. Um, washing my fingers because it was hot. Do the do. Yeah, and when I guess when I might do a quick, I think I'll do a quick recap. Um, I'll try to get a quick recap of tomorrow of the drying yarns, but then I'll film a bit of a longer recap where I'll insert some of the pictures of the dying along the way. But this is awesome. This is so, so cool. I don't think I have, oh, come on. The color balance is just not, it's like cloudy and I hate when white balance does not work. It's show, not showing as bright as it really is. Um, Anyway, the yeah, I'll, and in the longer recap, I'll insert some like pictures from like the various steps. But this is so cool looking. Um, and you know, there's longer sections, there's some sections of short green, but then there are. Is there would there be green throughout the whole thing? That's funny. Part of that tie took up a lot of color. Um, but it's just, it's fun. It's fun. It's not, it's a non-repeating, non-repeating colorway, but okay, I'm moving this so it can go cool. Oh, that's so pretty. I am so happy. Okay, I'm moving you back over here. have another I like so I like the big steam pan because I can move it around and it doesn't collapse but I did get some aluminum paste pans from the dollar store. If I can open this up. Now you don't want to 
dye yarn and an aluminum pan, but they're nice for, like, I have all these plastic pans and stuff, but you don't want it to melt anything. So I picked up just some of these little kits. Okay, so any color requests? Uh, the colors left, there's a lot of blue, a tiny bit of yellow, um, and then a little bit each of the orange, green, red, and pink. This is so pretty. It's like blue and peach, and it's got speckles and really really pretty and then also you can request either stroll or swish and I guess I suppose you could also request one at a time or two because I have four skeins of yarn down here actually I have more than that but um, let's see thank you so much for joining um, Ooh, pumpkin or squash blossoms opening, absolutely. Um, okay, I am so, so excited. I am just really, really excited. Um, and that's not where I add my face back. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if I put some of my pumpkins next to it, it's gonna look, and my, my core leaf, since I got it for the photography this morning, it's wilted. Um, but yeah, if I pick a new leaf, I'll be able to make a really pretty like picture of, you know, sometimes people will show the picture of like their, their dyed yarn next to an inspiration photo. I'll be able to put my inspiration in the same photo as the yarn and I'm really excited. Ooh, fun. Yeah, it's, it's like magic. It is just, I love dyeing yarn and I was so nervous that I wouldn't be able to get the green to show through, but it worked. And I mean, the green showed through and it's, yeah, the yellow was a bit brighter than I wanted, but otherwise the, uh, the green and the orange are pretty good. Hmm. Yeah, so if some of you might be joining, we've been doing this for a while now, but um, I started off with a pumpkin inspiration and I mixed uh, three colors, a yellow, an orange, and a green out of some Jacquard acid dyes. And the colors I started with were fire red, pink, um, sky blue, and sun yellow. Yeah, and so that's what I started with. And uh, we've also been dyeing some other guys along the way. So here is a skein of stroll that was not done the same way. It did twisted hanks here, but then I added some pops of red into it and just added like a bunch more green, which is also looking very, very fall and pumpkin-y. And then I've got this one right here, which is like the orangey and blue. But the theme of the day is just sort of like non-repeating colorways. And so I am, I think I want to play with the syringes some. Um, so it's not quite low immersion because to be low immersion, the water level would need to be lower. <laughs> but okay, let's start. Let's start with the red. So that's the last, I can get a little more water in here. I've got, I, you guys can't see, I don't think, but I've got a, um, a skein of swish around my neck, like a necklace. And the yarn is dry, so I did not pre-soak anything for today. And so this is red, but it will read sort of more of a strawberry like pink. And technically, this is a dip dye right now. Ooh, that's actually really pretty. I might not want to do anything else. Um, okay, well, you know what? 
I thought I was gonna do other stuff to it. Maybe I'll add some pink, like I'll move it around and add some pink speckles to it. But that ended up being really pretty in its own right. <laughs> I need like just to show you like we soaked up a lot of the color already and got sort of this dark to pale pink gradient from the red that was cool <laughs> I was like oh and it's slowly but I was like this is a whole new way to do the dip dyeing I mean when I do the dip dyeing I usually start pre-soaked and then I'll raise and lower and the reason why I do that is so I can kind of gauge how quickly the color is adding on so I can know I can dip faster. But this is higher acid. How many? I've added a lot of acid. So that's why it struck just like so, so, so fast. Um, that is hilarious. Um, uh, so I think dying the Twisted Hank is like really, really random. Um, I think that you could do something similar that's a little more repeatable by doing some low immersion. So we've got like this whole steam pan here, right? If you added a little bit of water, added the yarn to it, and then with a syringe or something dropped like bits of yellow around and then bits of green and bits of orange, you could do something that's a little more re reproducible and that might be a little less asymmetric, but still have a very similar layered feel if that makes sense. Um, okay, so now I'm taking the pink. I have no idea if this is going to show up, but let's... Because the first was red. Yeah, it's not showing up a ton. Bummer. Um, I'll let that set. I was hoping that it might be like distinct enough from the red. I wonder if fire red and pink are some of the same stuff. So I don't want to end up with like mass. I do sort of want to shift here and see. Okay, so the pink didn't quite do what I had wanted. Uh, okay. It's pretty though. I might just do a little more pink. There. And maybe I'll do that on the darker section in a moment too. It's very pretty. Um, yeah, I think that, so I think the first time I had done this in three different so I've done the Twisted Hank, like I shared the link somewhere in the chat. I did it years ago um, with Easter egg dye tablets and stuff. And then I did it, I've done it as some kind of space dyeing thing with multiple colors a few times. But there's, I had the 5 million views celebratory live stream. Um, and in there, there was one that I did just in leftover dyes three different times. And it was really pretty. on the darker side. I'm not sure this will really read, may not read as any additional sort of speckling or something, but I'll just let that kind of go for a moment. I'll reduce the temperature, but that's really pretty. That's really, really pretty. Um, oh, my, my pleasure. It is always, oh, of course I have the saturation up, so I don't think you guys can see. This feels, it's like, this is gorgeous. Um, I wish I could have, like, a box. saturation for it so the yellows would show. This is more what it looks like. And that's pretty clear. 
Okay, this is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to take this out, add it onto one of my little pans for cooling off. The pumpkin yarns, I think, will probably bleed yellow for a while. That's sort of what they do. Well, that's sort of what sun yellow does. Ugh, sun yellow. You are the bane of my existence. But I'm just, I'm having a blast, you guys. Sometimes it's fun to just play um, and just completely play with color. Uh, I think I'm going to start with something similar, but I'm going to do the blue first this time. So that's, ooh, you can see some of the stuff on the bottom. This is why I cut my colors end up, like I don't think that they were mixed well enough. Or I think things crashed out, um, but the first time I used sky blue, I was underwhelmed, and I'm less underwhelmed now. I like the color that it is. So I'm doing this to sort of get something that's tonal. So it's dip dyed because it's literally dipped, but it's also tonal. There's still some good blue in there. Um, we're now starting to get into more of a low immersion type category just because the water level is getting lower. Okay, I'm going to add some. <laughs> that was an old timer. Um, which, oh, you know what I could do? I can zoom this, zoom you guys in a bit. Um, so that way you can see more on top. I'm going to do what I was doing before, but with this pink. This time, we have something that shows up a bit more. And I'm going to just give that a minute, and then I'll move it around and do it again. And yeah, I think that it is. Nice and fun. Hot, hot. But again, if you have something that feels like this is looking like a nice tangled mess, um, even though I don't think it's actually tangled, um, waiting for it to cool, waiting for the yarn to um, dry, you can really uh, fix things a lot. Go and flip. I'm going to add some more pink. Approaching the end. And my color. So I'm going to let that sit for a minute. And this time, like, you, it does not show up enough, as much. This time, it's a lot more subtle on those blues, but the pink didn't really show up on the pink of the red very much. Because um, I think that the hues were too similar. But give it a little bit of time, and then I'll do that one more time just to add some fun, 
So, yeah, if you're just tuning in, you might be wondering why this doesn't look like pumpkin. Um, that's because I'm using the leftover dyes that I poured for mixing. But after I finish this one, then I have some green, orange, and yellow left behind. But if you want to see here is the pumpkin yarn looking way less vibrant than it really is. Um, the, I'll, I'll take it outside to try to get a better picture for Instagram or something, and I'll post something um, in not too long. is about to be the end of the pink. And since we've got high acid in here right now, that's why things are striking so quickly. But, you know, playing, doing the plan colorway is a lot of fun. But I think that my happy place is when I just take colors and throw them in a pot and see what happens. All of the colors that I'm working with here today started off as measured 1% stock solution. I think that they might be a bit more concentrated than that now um, because I think that my stock solution was not a perfect stock solution. That is really pretty. I'm really, really curious to see what some of these are going to look like dry. Okay. There's a hint of pink left in that water, but I think what I might do. Okay. This, I think, is what I'm going to do. I've got some green left. Let's measure. One, two, about two tablespoons. Um, of the green that I mixed. And the green that I mixed was a one-to-one -one ratio of my, what do you call them? One-to-one -one ratio of the yellow and blue. Got me the perfect pumpkin version. Now, if you want a more even color, you want to start off with more water. You want to start off with more water, pre-soaked yarn so you can add it quickly and start with it cold. Um, but so the way that this is going in, most of the green will absorb to the bottom. And then I'm going to add the orange and yellow on top. So that is my
Um, okay, so it says that maybe I'm resuming. <laughs> but, okay, if... It says that the stream is resuming, but I don't see anything. Um, if you can hear me, okay, trip and falls, if you can hear me, let me know. Oh, it's because I'm not showing up live right now. Ha ha. Nope. Mouse. Can't read it. Okay, because it's funny because I cannot see myself. Aha. Okay, I see myself. Um, let me try adding the webcam back. Yeah, no, the, the, that camera is not happy. I am going to, camera, I'm going to reset the program one more time, so bear with me. And it looks like we're back. Maybe. Um, since the stream is going on. Yay, there's my pot. But what? Where did the sound come from? Hmm. I'm not sure because I changed. Do do do. The audio from that is not working. Let me know. It is echoing. Okay, so I think that I'm now for audio on my laptop. I don't know if the webcam will start having audio again. Mm, thank you guys for hanging in. Um, no, I was trying to figure out why. Normally I have the audio coming from that camera, so I was trying to figure out why. But it should, I think, be working now. Let me see. Thank you guys for hanging in. Yeah, okay, it's working now. <laughs> Sorry for that meta moment. Um, Oh, good. Thank you guys so much for hanging in while we had some technical difficulties. Um, and now I'm going to make my face go away. Let's get back to this yarn. I'm surprised how un-orange that orange is right now. Ooh, but that's pretty. That is really pretty. Um, okay, I don't want to do anything else to that. That is just really, really pretty because it got like the green on one side and the yellows on the other. So this one I still got. Okay, we are going to go and just do, we're going to just make a color just totally randomly because there's stuff in the pot I'm adding. Some vinegar there. I'm adding more water because our water level is really low. I have one more skein of yarn. I have a little bit of yellow. Um, but I think what I want to do. Oh dear. Oh, I hope Jacob's okay. Um, Oh, did I lose? Wait, I lost audio again? Oh no, I don't have timestamps on you guys for whatever reason. Let me just check. Um... Oh, did I lose? Wait, I lost audio again? No, okay, I didn't lose audio again. Um... <laughs> have you ever glazed with a lighter color to cover up any white spots? 
Um, die cut PS number three. I was hoping that the purple would be dark and sort of go all over, but it ended up um, mostly soaking up in like the white areas and that was really, really pretty. Um, but I did gray over dyed with violet. Um, okay. So, since we're just going for this, here is my Jacquard Fire Red. I just poured it in. Don't know how much is there. It's just, it's just there. It just is. It just is existing in the pot. No idea how much. Okay, and my hank is folded in half, and I'm folding it in half again as I lower it into the pot. And so I'm sort of going for these like ends first. This middle second-ish. Very, very beautiful. Okay. And now I've got that last of that the rest of that orangey stuff. I think what I want to do is take it around the outside. I'm just curious. Okay, so this is that orange that I mixed. And I'm really just applying it. Oh dear, I missed that spot. To this outside edge. That's maybe a yellow spot. Oh well. There might be some yellow spots where it was not quite down all the way. Okay. And that is all my dye. All the dye that I had is now a man. I don't, I don't know, both the, the yellow and the orange and the yellow. Um, right, that is officially all the dye that I have. Um, there's like reds around that outside. I'm very curious what this pattern will look like. Um, but there's some hints of orange in there now too. Okay. Wahoo! And that is nine skeins of yarn, you guys. In, let's see, what's my dye rate? Oh dear. Um, in two hours and 40 minutes. It's not bad. Not bad. Um, Oh yeah, I missed a few spots. Yeah, no, I saw that. <laughs> oh, sometimes uh, you notice late. But um, yeah, this is, oh, why am I not? Um, oh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. It keeps throwing me off, so I'm not watching the live stream live um, for whatever reason. Um, Oh dear, hopefully I did not. Oh. Let's see, what's my diary? Oh dear. Um, so I've enabled. Um, <laughs> oh, I've sometimes. Enabled, uh, uh, so you know, this late. But um, yeah, this is. From any point oh, why am I not? You can, like, um, oh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. it. It keeps throwing oh. me off, so I'm not and watching I, the live stream live. I still have tons of dialogue. Um, so I made my stop solutions. For I mean, whatever reason. Um, oh dear, hopefully I did not. Oh, let's see, that's my diary. Oh dear. Um, so I've enabled, um,
<laughs> uh, sometimes, uh, you know, it's late, but, um, yeah, this is, oh, why am I not, um, oh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. It keeps throwing me off, so I'm not watching the live stream live, um, for whatever reason. Um, oh dear, hopefully I did not, oh, let's see, that's my diary. Oh dear. Um, so I've enabled, um, <laughs> well, sometimes, uh, you know, it's late, but, um, yeah, this is, oh, why am I not, um, oh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. It keeps throwing me off, so I'm not watching the live stream live, um, for whatever reason, um, Oh my, yes, yes. Okay, I don't know how desktop audio turned on. That was weird. So yeah, it's fixed now. That was super, super weird. I've never had... I've never had that happen. Before. And of course now I want to oh, keeps thinking it just made me live. Okay, now oh, can't hear anything so I just turned off. Oh good. Okay. Um sorry for all the technical difficulties. When my webcam went down, that throws me for a loop when I have to troubleshoot all this real time. You guys are all really, really good sports. Um, and before I sign off, I'll, I guess I didn't start a timer, but I'll take this one out of the pot so we can just sort of see a tiny bit of it. But, and then I'll, like, I'll do a little recap of the other yarns that we dyed today. But yeah, this was a lot of fun. And if you enjoyed this, there's a few things that you could do that would help me out. Um, one thing you can do is make sure you give this live stream a thumbs up. Um, that is awesome. And if you haven't subscribed to the Chemist Tutorials YouTube channel, please subscribe. Uh, then you can, even if you want to make sure you don't miss a live stream, you can turn on notifications and then I guess YouTube will let you know when I go live. Uh, something else you can do is if you love it so much that you want to contribute to materials and stuff, there's a dollar sign at the bottom of the chat. Um, it lets you give a super chat, which is sort of like a tip jar. Um, but otherwise, if you are interested in maybe bringing home some yarn that I've dyed in one of my videos, you can check out the Chemnitz Creations Etsy store. Um, I will, if, any, if anyone orders some yarn today and it's some of the ready to ship yarn, I will ship it out um, either this evening or tomorrow morning. But then after that, it will be like another week before I'm able to ship things out. Um, I'm going to drop a link to my shop. All these links to stuff are in the video description, but um, the, the shop is a nice way to like contribute to everything that goes on here. Keep, because, you know, the money goes back into like more bear yarn and stuff. Um, but, and then also you get some yarn in exchange. So that is pretty fun. Uh, yeah, the, there's our, oh yeah, I guess if you aren't aware of the Hanukkah sampler, um, the reason why I'm not playing a shop on vacation mo mode is because I'm going to leave the pre-orders up. Um, but the, the Hanukkah sampler is really, really cool. Um, in Hanukkah this year, I'm going to be doing, each night I'll release a new dyeing video. And if you pre-order the sampler, uh, the first week in November, I will mail you a package that has eight little presents in it, and each present contains a mini skein from one of those episodes. So you can unwrap yarn and watch the video. You can start watching the video and unwrap the yarn. Uh, there's many ways you could do it, but it gives you, it will allow multiple people to get to experience the, like, what the yarn looks and feels like. And then if you wanted, you know, they, you could use them for many different things. It's going to be eight different yarn bases. So I don't have a design that uses all of them together, 
but I'm doing eight different techniques. So then you could swatch, you could, you know, it, it just gives you a way. So then maybe you might decide how you might want to dye a colorway or and um, things like that. So that is there in the shop as well. But I'm going to go check on this pink, pink guy. Okay. Ooh. My, uh, okay. I'm going to shift this. Oh, nope. Nope. I'm going to put some yarn in here, but see, there's a blue spot. I need to rinse this out first. This is where I have all the cups for sitting. And even on my white little plastic bins, I write not for food on them. So then I use in different plastic bins for the um, washing and stuff. Okay. I turn off the heat. Ooh, that's cool. I'm really curious. So there's a deep red, a deep, deep, deep red. There's the pink. And then sort of in the middle, there's some more of an orangey red. But okay, I don't want to make a mess, but I'm curious of how the colors will be segmented. Okay, let me, uh, let me shift things around. A lot of food today. Okay, so I pulled the one I pulled one out just now. But in addition to oh uh, no, these are still a little hot for me to I want to let them cool completely before I move them around too much because I don't want to burn myself. Yeah, those are all still a bit hot. Um, let me shift the camera so that you guys can see. Okay, so here, and I'm sorry, the colors. The webcam is so good for many things, but colors is not great. Hi, Sarah. I'm wrapping up at the end. I dyed nine skeins of yarn today. So uh, what did you miss? A little bit of stuff. <laughs> okay, but here, this was red with some pink, and we got a nice strawberry color. So I think that the fire red, not at its highest saturation, gives a really nice pink which unfortunately this is a bit blown out. Um, this one had some peach and then we've got some blue speckles. These were all low immersion-esque, dip dyed slash low immersion combo. This one is blue and it's got some pink um, speckling. This one is a variegated yellow and green one from dip dyeing and then some low immersion addition of color. Um, then we've got, let's see if I can, that's cool, get this stroll, yes I can. So I used, the, the primary yarn we dyed today was the Hawthorne, but I did have one skein of stroll that I dyed, and I used this to use up some of the leftover colors, um, and it's just green, some lime green, orange, and hint of brown. Because um, at the very end, I just tossed it in the green, and I think it's just beautiful. Um, so there's that one. I'm gonna whew, soon go and rinse. But the the yarn that was the and the goal today was this one, which oh that yellow. Okay, let me change. Let me try to change the camera settings so this one looks. Oh dear. No, 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 no. Oh, that's what I did. I thought I stopped streaming accidentally, but I stopped recording. Uh, or I started recording, um, which was not what I wanted to do. Figure video. Let's do up the saturation. Okay, that is a little more what... Okay, that's a little more what it looks like. We've got some bright yellow and orange and green. And this was a twisted hink three times. 
So there will be some differences between the three, even though they were dyed side by side. Like here, we've got some longer sections of color um, and some more green, but the, the colors just play together really well. And I think it really works with my inspiration of my now really wilted, I don't really have as much of the white, but my mini pumpkins and the, the leaf. Um, the white isn't as helpful, but this one has some of the yellow and orange and the orange and the green. And those were the four colors. The white pumpkins match their yarn really well, but <laughs> uh, I was a little, I didn't twist tightly enough with the yellow at the beginning. So um, yeah, that is what we did today. And I, I don't want you guys to get your hopes up. I will try to do a short recap tomorrow of uh, some of the yarn on the drying rack. Um, but um, otherwise, once it's dry and I get back to the office, then I'll film a recap showing what, um, where's my hand? These yarns <laughs> look like at the various stages along the way, because I took pictures, um, intermediate pictures, but yeah. Um, oh, it's two o'clock. Yeah, this is what I, I like. I just want to dye yarn. And I like doing these live streams sometimes. It gives um, a good chance for you guys to ask me questions. Uh, but also then you get to see sort of like the whole, uh, sometimes I fly by the seat of my pants a lot when I'm filming a, a video. But a lot of times I have a plan. Like I might change mid screen, stream, but my goal today is like, okay, I have these colors and I want to do this kind of technique and let's see what happens and then there was all the leftover dye and I was like okay let's play with this and dye some stuff <laughs> thank you thank you I'm glad that you like them um, some of these might end up my some I think most of these might end up in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy store um, in one of the next shop updates uh, so that's something to watch out for. But yeah, thank you so much for joining me. And don't forget to like and subscribe and all that jazz. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think if there was anything else. Um, feel free to... Oh, I'm just checking out my little pumpkin. Um, feel free to leave... <coughs> Excuse me. Feel free to leave any questions or comments um, on the video. The replay will, I mean, the replay will be up. But I do reply to comments. I might be a little slower than normal over the next week, uh, but I do try to get to them directly. Uh, if you ask a question that is in the reply to another comment, that I might, um, sometimes I'm able to see them, sometimes I end up missing them and I'm unable to find them because they don't, they sh the, the way that the comments show up, it shows up like the newest ones. So if it's something, um, if I don't reply to a question, feel free to like start it as a freestanding comment. But thank you guys so much for, for joining me and for checking out all the stuff and listening to me chat for almost three hours. Uh, I had fun. I hope you guys did too. Uh, but yeah, now I think I'm probably gonna go, well, I'm not kidding. I'm going to wash all the yarn <laughs> and then I might go and edit a few more videos and yeah, thank you guys so much for joining and I will chat with uh, you guys soon. Uh, when I get back, I hope maybe we'll do some more dying live streams, but thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you all have a great day. Bye everyone.